<sighs> Howdy doody folks. Letting people know that we're going live. Apologise for the late start. Crikey, full T to balance this one's right up to the top. Oh, this is a tad warm as well. How's everyone doing? Yowza. Do the Vickers tea thing. More cucumber sandwiches. Why not? Right. Um, oh, what's going on with that? Is that a funny angle? What's going on with that? It's also rather dark. Anyhow, so what are we going to do this evening? Um, I see I post is in the house. Howdy, I post. How you doing? Let's have a quick look at the light here. Yeah, yeah. Didn't know I was high long. Wow. I've told you you are now, so you must be. Well, so that's hot. Hot, hot, hot. So, um, I've been having a great deal of fun this week, but before we do it, I should do an update. Uh, hi, Laurie. Um, is the audio okay, by the way, guys? Um, let me just double check. You big again. I know I need a haircut, it's a mess. Um, what's I gonna say? Oh yeah, update first. So let's, um, let's do that. Let's look at the browser. And I'll look at hold on. Um I'm not to dox myself too much here. Oh. Right, so I have not yet, strangely, received my boards on the allotted scheduled uh, reception date from FedEx. Um, so it was in Charles de Gaulle FedEx um, 
centre on what was it Friday? I think it was already there. Let me just update this. I don't suppose it's changed. There was a slight change today, actually. <coughs> so it kept saying, you know, um, expected Tuesday four for the twelfth until four for the twelfth passed, and then it said updated delivery pending and it's kind of been in um, that kind of weird um, state and then finally today yeah if you look here so it was at Charles de Gaulle Saturday here yeah. And then um, it's just been sitting there on operational delay for one, two, three, four, nearly five days. So I've no idea that what that was about. But today there was a development. Look, at ten past five. I guess that no, is that uh, Central European time or UK time. I'm not sure. But. Um, it actually moved from operations delay in transit and I see there's just been an update that must be central European time because it's not eight o'clock here yet well it's just eight o'clock maybe that just happened departed FedEx hub so it may well be um, leaving France today which could mean that it um, comes over to the UK tomorrow with any luck I don't know if they're going to deliver it tomorrow because it's still not giving me um, a delivery estimation. It's kind of weird. I don't quite understand why it was sit just sitting there for all that time. Bonkers. Um, unless it's something to do with the issue that they've got with the Brexit systems at the moment entirely possible because that's kind of messed up oh I'm getting a few drop frames not many it's not perfect but anyhow so yes I have no boards which is a real shame I hope to have them so what I've been working on this week is um the Q spy. So let's have a look at that. And I have had a real nightmare with it, quite frankly. Um, why is it still showing that when I turn it off? Off review browser. Right. Two browsers, that browser. There we go. So, um, yes, I've been working on the Q Spy, and it's been a real nightmare, quite frankly. I've had all sorts of problems. I'm just reading the um, messages. I post was reminding me that Laurie picked up the CM4 case because he got his ULX 4M or the SD RAM version of it and he's trying to get it working with the um, uh, is it a CM4 case and he's having some problems actually getting it to um, power and get it in DFU mode or unpower and then repower in DFU mode. Um, so yeah, I've had a bit of a nightmare really, uh, if I shine some light on this, um, i maybe move this away, here, this thing, where my finger is, 
here is the P-Mod adapter on the Proto board and I now have the wires correctly attached. But bef before I was using um, the Logic Analyzer wires with one of these extenders. But stupidly, what I didn't realize is that I'd messed up the PMOD tile on this. And the connectors were all insanely messed up. And I was thinking I had shorts and things on the QSPY uh, signals that I was passing through the VGA to this PMOD adapter and then onto the logic analyzer, which is where these uh, wires go. Um, and actually what turned out was the, um, the PMOD was all messed up. Luckily I found another way of um, connecting it up that seems to um, give me more sensible results. But I was really kind of sent up the garden path on that one. And it's been driving me nuts. And giving me all sorts of really, really very strange, um, strange problems. But I mean, because of the way that the wiring was messed up, I was trying to drive lines that were power lines and all sorts of dark things going on. It was just madness. And I didn't realize. Um, so some signals were being copied because they were on um, ports that were connected together, among other things. So yeah, it's been a bit insane, really. But I do now have this working. Um, and I can see the logic, so uh, I wonder if I can bring that up. Uh, which one of these? Screen capture? Window capture? Probably. Uh, can I see it on here? I know when I ran this on Windows, I had problems seeing it, but I, oh, it seems to come up okay on here. So there you go. What we've now got is a um, a reasonable signal. In fact, let me just try and get this roughly there. So yes, we can now, I mean, it's a bit glitchy, um, but it's a reasonable signal. So if we look at this just um, temporarily, what we have here is Hold on, I change the order here. Hold on, one moment, uh, I have changed the order.
Just rearrange for a sec, hold on. Um, I just really need to set this up a minute one to because I've changed the order one, two, three, four, five, six. It's gonna be active on six. I've just messed the order up. It's because I was messing about with the uh, next step. Totally and utterly messed myself up here. Hold on, I'll do a capture again. Let's see what we pick up. just do the analyzer again because this is now messed up so um, that's got to go to one channel two channel three channel four and then clock is on channel five there we go Kind of makes sense now. Um, so in this view here at the top is QDR, and we're not using that. Then we've got QD0, QD2, QD3, QD4, clock, and select. So um, just to explain, so QSPI or QSPI is basically just like SPI, except in, instead of transferring. Um, <clears throat> one bit for each clock edge um, it transfers four bits or a nibble the advantage of this is it can transfer a byte in two clock cycles as opposed to eight which is significantly faster so what we're seeing here forget the top line here because that's just QDR we're not using it at the moment so there's our first data bit there's our second so two to the two to the one two to the two two to the three um, this fourth data part of the nibble is a bit weird I'll come back to that it shouldn't really look like that it's got a pull up on it which I believe is actually a short on the board um, to an adjacent pin um, I'm dropping a few frames that's not good so if we look in closely, what we see is this is counting up. So the first section here, if I zoom in a bit closer, you can see the dots appearing where the sample should be on the bits. So the first one, so what, what you will normally see is two transfers, two nibble transfers right next to each other. That's what these dots are representing. because They line up with these edges. Can you see? So that will be the first nibble and that will be the second nibble. Sorry, the other way around. That's the first nibble. That's the second nibble. Okay. So what it sends first is zero, because what we're doing in the STM32 software is we're counting from zero to 16, um, and then we're outputting. So the next one is that goes to one, so it's zero, and then zero, one. Then it goes up to two, three, four, 
four and one's five, four and two is six, four and two and one is seven, etc. etc. I mean you can see the decoded values here. That the analyzers um, providing for me. Damn it, I've lost it. Let's remember not to do that. And it goes all the way up to E. 15. Um, you do see some glitchy bits in it, which is annoying. It is a bit susceptible to that. That's because I'm not being able to ground the, the, the kind of diff part of the signals. I'm only grounding one of the common ones or two of the common ones. Um, and the leads aren't particularly clever. So it's a bit noisy. Um, and in order to see this, I'm obviously running, the other thing that I've done is I've now, um, let's have a look at the code, because there's a few things that I'm doing in the code to make this work. So let's just switch now to the um, ID. And I'll show you the things I've changed on the code. fits as well as it can be and I'll probably up, up the um, font size as well in a minute. Excuse me, one second, making some adjustments. So on the code specifically things that have changed on um, black crap So this is the initialization section. This is all pretty much the same. Um, declaring all the IO pins, etc., 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 And I'm declaring the QSPI stuff here. Um, basically saying that I'm using quad SPI, sorry, um, a transaction size of one, address size of one, but that's gonna be ignored and changed anyhow in the transaction, but when I call this, what happens in the background? All right, before this actually, let me just cover the clocks. So one thing I've added to the clocks now is this, which is the master control oscillator output. Before we, it was set to the internal oscillator, which was creating a 16 megahertz output, which was from the internal oscillator of the SGM32, which isn't very accurate. What I want is the crystal oscillator. Um, it's driven by the crystal on the outside. So I've changed that. Um, that's referred to as the HSE. Now in the newer version, on well, the original version of the HAL, uh, I couldn't do that because the function wasn't there. So when I initially wrote this, that wasn't there. Hello Twitch, say hello. Oh, hello everyone. I've come to remind this person that they should feed me some more, but I've still got some food left. From earlier. No. And now somebody decides to call me. Bear with me. Hold on, I'm just gonna mute for a sec, bear with me.
Sorry, folks, I'm back. <laughs> that was really weird. That was my oldest daughter. Uh, she's on her way somewhere. <laughs> I thought she was heading here, but she wasn't. She's heading to our town, but um, to see a friend. And the road was closed. She had to pull over and she was lost. Needed directions. Offspring, eh? Who'd have them? Right. Yes, I did mute. Sorry, I post. I thought it was a good idea rather than you listening to me giving her directions. Plus, I didn't know what she was calling me for. Twinkles. So, where were we? Yes. So, um, basically, I've changed the uh, clock uh, setting here for the master control output because we output a clock from the STM32 to the FPGA, the ICE40 it needs a clock input so we don't have a separate oscillator for the FPGA uh, we basically um, use the master clock output functionality of the STM32 to send it a signal in this case we're sending it 25 meg out which is really just the um, the output from the oscillator that's using a crystal that's attached to the STM32 uh, so that's changed on here so that corrects the timing stuff that we had before so it's now 25 megahertz crystal based rather than uh, the 16 megahertz internal oscillator, which is better. This cat doesn't know what to do. Do you want to go out? Is that what you're after? So all these dependents I have, cats, daughters, partners, you name it. Apologies, <laughs> interruption. Good feelings, it'll be like that tonight. My frame rate, oh, I've got quite a few frames. It's creeping up, I don't like that. So anyhow, that's that bit. Now, the other thing I'm doing is I'm creating the uh, QSPI uh, here, right? When I create that QSPI driver, um, the STM32 F7 HAL assumes you're going to run it at its maximum speed. Um, which is about 108 megahertz. So what it does, it sets the divider from the main system clock, which is 216 megahertz, um, to two. So it divides down to 108 megahertz. Now that's pretty fast for the FPGA, and I'm not sure if we're going to certainly have a driver for that yet. We're going to need to do something special for it to work at that uh, speed. I think it's only SDR, but even so. Um, that's at the edge of the capabilities of the uh, um, this particular FPGA. We'll see. So one of the things you need to do is change that. So in order to do that, I'm running a local, local copy of the HAL, uh, which I am redirecting uh, this uh, feature path to. And inside there, when we look at the creation, of the um, QSPI here. So when we do a new here, this is the important part. This is where it sets the initial uh, bits for the peripheral, including that is normally one because the divider is one plus whatever this number is. So it's normally one, which gives us a divide by two. So what I've done is I've changed that to 15, which gives us 15 plus one, which is a divide by 16. So we're running at a much lower frequency just to give ourselves a chance at decoding it in a decent way. Um, so that's now running roughly about 13 and a half megahertz as opposed to 108 megahertz. We can change this later. But anyhow, I can manipulate that, which I couldn't do before. So I'm now doing that in here. Um, everything else is pretty much the same. And then what happens is after we program the, um, so this is a USB task. After we program uh, the FPGA, I spawn another task called a DSPI task here, which which normally I have turned off. 
and that runs this task here and all this task does is it has a for loop effectively there and it creates a QSPI transaction and the for loop counts from 0 to whatever the count set in this case I've set it to 16 so it goes around this loop 16 times and creates 16 transactions um, I'm not using any instructions in this transaction. So the QSPI, cons um, QSPI transaction can consist of instructions, addresses, and data, as well as dummy cycles. Uh, the dummy cycles are if you're going to do a read and you need to give it time to process the instruction you've sent it before you start reading it back. Um, but we're not using any dummy stuff. We're not using any addressing because we're not talking to any, uh, you know, memory device here or flash device. And we're not talking to anything that supports instructions at this point. We're just sending a bit of data because this is just a test. Okay. And the length of that data is one byte. Okay. So all we do is we call the write each time round in the loop. Um, and write is called with an array of bytes or U8s, if you like, unsigned 8 bits. Um, in this case, we're just passing the current value of count. So basically, what we're passing to it is the count. So we're going up 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's all we're doing here. Um, and when we look at the logical signal, uh, this one, that is what we're looking at. Let me just move that to one side. So you're seeing zero. Zero, one, two, etc. And you can see the values here. You can see the two clock cycles because it's transferred as a nibble to four bits that gives you a complete byte. So that byte is zero, which is made up of two nibbles and then one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen and fifteen but you can't read that because it's really small it's there and that's all we're doing. And it took me a long time to do that because of the problems I had hooking into the signal. So all I'm doing in this case is I'm taking those input signals from the STM32, they're going to the FPGA. I'm then using a piece of code to actually move that through to the um, logic analyzer, which is connected to the PMOD tile on this particular setup as I pointed out before. So let's now switch IDE wise to to this one. Let me just size this the same way. Zero one, so that fits in just now. Yeah. So on here, what we have is uh, I've created some resources at the top here. Um, this is just a tester um, project effectively. So on here I create some resources called tiles. In, in, in this case I've actually got two tiles in. I've got the LED tile which you, you've seen before which has the 12 LEDs on it connected to the tile digital IOs. That's this top one here defined. And then I have another one which is the logic probe which is basically I'm just taking the pins from that tile connection through the PMOD connection into a little right angle connection which then connects 
to the uh, logic analyzer. I'm only actually using eight bits of these signals. I'm only using those, and then I'm putting some constant zeros in those. And you can see that here, look. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the logic probe, which is basically the IO output signals on the PMOD adapter. And then what I'm doing is I'm assembling all of the parts of the QSPY signal, which is seven lines coming into the FPGA. Then I'm adding five constant lines of zero. Uh, this is replicate these constants, one bit constant at a value zero, five of them. 7 plus 5, so I've got 12 bits. Uh, I'm creating a module, obviously, to put this in. And then I'm used, just using a combinational statement to um, connect, effectively, the QSPY signals to the logic probe signals in a one-to-one -one correspondence. And that's how we can capture, even though the STM32 Q spy signal is going into the FPGA, what we're looking at is the state of those pins going into the FPGA because I'm sending those signals across to other IO output pins on the FPGA, in fact, one of the tiles, so that we can actually look at that. And um, because we've now got a signal that looks like uh, quad SPI, um, what we can do is um, have a look at trying to decode that and perhaps show that on the other part that I have here, which is the LEDs. At the moment, there's a there's an example here, uh, and all that does is it connects a timer to those LEDs that counts up. What I want to do is create a new um, new piece of logic here that actually decodes the uh, quad SPI signal and puts the results onto um, the lower eight bits of the LEDs. Let me just check uh, my messages here because I've been busy looking at that. And that's what we're going to do in a sec. So. Uh, I post. I would see Laurie's still talking about his CM4 and this um, CM4 case, which is cool. Right, so I'm going to create a new class. Let me just. Let me just copy this. Panel. Just copy this. Let's call this Q spy to LED test. And here we're going to use as the output, we're going to use the LEDs. Now, if I was to use this like this, all we're going to see on the LED, so if I run this now, I'm going to run this one. Sorry. I'm going to run. What are we going to call this LED probe? Let's call it LED display. And let's enumerate this class rather than the logic test one. So if I now do this, so if I run this,
I don't really see anything. Not entirely surprising. Um, but actually I've missed something. Let me just check the tile numbers. As it is 12. Ah. Still trying to get the Logic Pro resource rather than the LED resource. Let's run it again. Okay, you see the LEDs clearing, and then you see basically um, one, two, three, four LED five lighting up and LED seven lighting up. Um, LED 5 and 7 are, are the um, are the QD4, the fourth data bit, and the um, QSS. Now QSS is normally high, that's why the LED is on. QD4 should normally be low, but because we've got this issue with it, I'll remind you briefly. Can you see that QD4 here is high, then low, high, low, high, low. That shouldn't be low, that should actually be low. But anyhow, so on the final state, which is what we're looking at now, low, 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 high, low, high, low, which is exactly what we're seeing on the LEDs here. Do I need a bit more light on that perhaps? So you can see the LED bits. So a bit naught is at this end, going up, 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 and at this end we've got um, the uh, QSS. Now, obviously, we're just showing the end state here. All the data's passed through and changed. We could slow it down, but what we probably want to do is a bit more than that. Um, let's slow it down first. So I'm just going to go back and put a little delay in that transaction. If I can hold on. Uh, what I want to do is use a register. So it stays with the last value. Um, let me get rid of this because we've still got the. Uh... So in other words, it, at the moment it's just combinational when it's showing. Um, current value and what we want to do is just have it freeze on the last value that's what we do first so hold on a sec let me Let's just do a bit of copying and pasting here from something else I have. If um, so, QSPI in this case 
it will be QSPI What's the best way in NMIGEN to pick out of a catted? Can you do it as so that'd be zero one five six? Can you do that maybe? I always forget. And then, um, oh, we need to import rows as well. So on the clock here, what we need to capture is the, um, we need to capture the nibble. Let's use the last nibble for now. So let's have a uh, register, let's have a signal here. Uh, Call this, uh, so it's going to be a signal. Um, we want it to be eight bits, don't we? to sample the value here. Would need to be well, it could be self, so I know. Let's not complicate it. Let's just keep that out for a sec. 
So we've got a structure here, and then this would be Q spy. And it would be, that's minus four, that would be minus four to minus eight, or is it plus four? And it's the third one, oh, one, two, three, four, it's one to five. Is it one to five? God. Um, probably the only other way in Python, isn't it? One to Some extra bits here. So we've got 12 bits on the um, so I need to add in four data bits. data bits in addition to the data we've just created. Uh, cat, hold on. I just let the cat through. Turn inside the door there, Twinkle Mouse. Let me do it in two stages actually. Um, if I catch each nibble first. If I catch each nibble on the clock cycle, um, Laurie, can you remember? Is it are, are these meant to be around the other way for Python? If I want to catch bits one through to five, i.e., these one through to four, should that be five one? 
sorry, that's here. And that should be nibble, 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 nibble. No, he says it's correct. So, uh, what I'm trying to do here in my daft, silly way, because it's been a long time, is um, if the CS signal uh, Laurie, is this the correct, correct way of addressing using the array arithmetic of something that's catted? That is the way, isn't it? Um, to what I'm saying here, because this represents the uh, QSS signal, this one. Yeah. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. By the seventh element. And so if that is high... That means it's the end of the uh, transaction. I we've received two nibbles effectively, or the second nibble. So, but on each clock cycle, um, yeah, always just saying QSP I six is, is correct. Um, so on each. So when we, when we, when the, um, when the select signal QSS goes high, then this, this will be active. Otherwise, this will be active um, in the in the else here. But there's also this thing here. Rows just means that, as in the signal rising, because if we just go back, let me just remind you what the signal looks like. Um, if we zoom in to the signal, uh, yeah. give it a nice easy one here. It's the rising edge that we want to capture the data in. Yeah, it's this edge. Um, so we're looking for the rising edge of the clock, which is, you know, the sixth bit because it's zero index, one, two, three, four, five, six, the clock bit. So if that's risen, what we do is we we take the nibble, which is from one through to five, not one, two, three, four, not to four rather, which is the same as one to five. Uh, not one, two, five. Is that inclusive? I can't remember. Oof, crikey, that might be wrong. So our nibble is going to equal that. Um, we should also add that to data. We'll add the last nibble plus. Oh, one minute, I've got a problem here. I've got two states. But doing the shift every time QSS is high does not look right. It will do that every clock cycle when QSS is high. Yeah, the shift should be here. Oh, I know what I need to do. Right, so, yes. I know what I should do. Hold on, it should be like this. And that should be 
in there, I think. I don't think we need nipple. And in here, this should be. Reset. I know. That looks a bit better. Does that look a bit better actually, um, Laurie? So all we're doing is we're shifting the nibble in each time we we see a uh, positive edge. Um, and obviously if the CS is low. But if the CS is high, then what we do is we copy the data into the display register and then we clear the data register. But well, let's do this more than once. Is that going to do it every clock cycle? Because it's going to end up resetting the display if it does that. Because this isn't an edge. Maybe we need a on a QSS right rose. We do that. Like that. So it, it's only done it if the um, the CSS QSS has risen. Otherwise, every clock cycle it'll end up just resetting display to zero. Does that make sense? Crikey. Been a while since I've written any amaranth. Let's see what it says. All right, so uh, typo sample value must be a signal or a constant, not flash R. What's it talking about here? Saying line eighty.
didn't point to where the error is in my <sighs> what does it look like here? What is the what's the actual complaint? Um uh, okay, line okay. Type error sample value must be a signal or a constant, not slice. Cat side Not a slice. Is it talking about that? Or both of these? Um, hold on. Let me just check something something daft Is it because it doesn't see this as a signal? Doesn't like not slice cat cat sig. So here, look, it's got it's, it's selecting the zero of QDR QDR. So it doesn't like. I'm taking a slice of a cat of that. Data. That's four bits. That's four bits. Hold your horses. I'm assuming this is the bit that it's not enamored with. So it must be a signal or a constant not slice oh it needs to be an, I'm not selecting a nibble of that maybe um Hold on. Let's break this down.
think the issue's on the rows. On both of them, you mean? I'm not sure it is because this is saying slice of a cat of the cat of those which looks more like that define them separately that's a good idea um what do i i've forgotten how to do that it's just a pin isn't it um what do i do do i do hold on So if I said QCK uh, equals um, that, do I have to create signal before I create that? Hold on. Sorry, I'll catch up in, with the uh, comments in a sec. Let me just put these in. Yes, that's exactly what you're saying. And then for the um, nibble, then that equals. And I can replace this with um, QSS, QSS, QCK, and then that becomes. Still doesn't like the um, sample value must be a signal or a constant, not a cat sig QSS naught underscore naught dot 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 i. I think it's still got a problem with this. Um, get these as a
four bit signal. Or, right, here's the other thing we can do. That. I could have used that track technique, couldn't I? Anyhow, whatever. <sighs> right, so I've got my nibble here. Made up of these signals, which are connected to those pins. Oh, I have to cap these, don't I? Still doesn't like that. Shit. Have I just gone a really long way about doing exactly the same sodding thing? Mm. How very 
frustrating. We'll look at this error again. Some sort of value must be a signal or a constant, not a cat. Which one is that talking about? Is that talking about this? Still on the rows, are you sure? The rows only acts on a single signal, not a cat. If you look at the error, uh, Laurie, it's showing the um, type that it thinks is wrong, which includes a cat. So it can't be QSS or QCK signals. It must be one of these that we're catting. And the only cats we've got now are the one in here and the one in there. There aren't any other cats. Do you concur? So this cat of QSS. No, it's saying the cat of a bunch of signals, isn't it? We're not using a cat to create the QSS. There is no cat. I'm doing this twice here. Ah, oh, no, I'm not. It says cat of QSS. It's because there's a QSS. No. How can it be saying that then? Mm. Touching test, touching test, ending test. Is this that line there? It's not one of the other glasses. Sample value must be a signal or content, not cat sig qss underscore nor underscore underscore i. Do you think it's this? But that is just equal to that. There's no cat in it. I don't have to declare these signals before, do I? Yeah, I see why you think it's a rose, because it says here, in rows. Q 
QSS, hold on. QSS defined in here is just a regular I.O. input. Right? And in here, all we're doing is we're fetching that from the platform. Here, there is no cat. And that's, is that what we're talking about? A bit confusing. Tell I'm rusty on this. Yeah, that's what I said. Do I need to declare them first? Them, so that makes any difference. Yeah, it seems happy now. Yeah, that's a bit um, strange, isn't it? That just moved. Let me just move it back into the picture. So we can see what that does. That lights up a um, set set, second set of LEDs the set and second nibble which is actually incorrect um, that is weird that we have to do that so if you want to use rows it needs to see that as a signal or it needs to be defined as a signal because it's clearly not recognising, you know, um, an, an anonymous signal, if you like. It's weird, isn't it? Right, 
So what it's saying here then is, so what what we should end up with is the first nibble lit up, not the second nibble, because we should end up with 16, right? That's what it counts up to. Sorry, 15. So it goes from 0 to 15, and 15 will be the bottom nibble. So if we remind ourselves what that looks like, the last state uh, oh shit, sorry about that, shouldn't have moved that, is this one here. So all the uh, lower LEDs are on, but all the next lot of LEDs are off. So the way we're displaying it is possibly around the wrong way. Hold on. Let me check my shifting here. Cat nibble. So that's a new. New should be going in the lower. That should be going in the upper. So it, should it be the other way round? No, it shouldn't. That made it worse. I know why. That's not the problem. The dis problem is this. Here. Yeah. That. These two need swapping around. A is being a div. Yay, that's right. It's a bit too much light on there. Let's try and improve the contrast a bit. Just finding the right balance, I guess. Because it's very bright on that camera. I'll tell you what I can do. I can actually um, change the aperture slightly. It's not very bright. Anyhow, now it's in the right place now. All oh, right, time for a refreshment. Right, so what's Laurie saying here? Um, just looking at my code. Oh, the that's the QSPY code, right? I avoided rows QSS as I don't copy the data. Um, should we have a quick Look at that, hold on me. Um,
want to go? Sorry, I'm just trying to adjust this so we can. Oh, this is so annoying. I can't grab hold of the damn thing. dealing with this trying to get these windows straight <sighs> you end up picking up the wrong bloody one oh, what have I moved now excuse me I'm just uh, fighting There we go. God, that was difficult. Too many windows. Too many layers in my OBS. Um, uh, Laurie is saying my code is a bit more general as it supports packets with any number of nibbles. Right. Yes, because you've got self.qw Yes, I remember seeing, I oh know I saw this. Yeah. Um, which makes sense. And you call them CSN and SCLK rather than QSS and QCK, but it's the same thing. But you, yeah, mm -hmm. you don't. You don't look for the rising edge of the CSM though. But it is very similar. How do you end up not resetting things? Oh, because you're continually sending them. But wouldn't that reset the chunks to zero? Whenever CSN is high. Because you're sending your packets off, it doesn't matter. But in my case, because I want to retain them, that wouldn't work, of course. Basically. But yeah, very similar. Cool. I have to do this because I want to keep hold of it. Otherwise, on the next clock cycle, if I didn't have the rows, data would be set to zero. And then on the clock cycle after that, display would then be set to zero. So we'd lose it. But if you're transmitting it out on the other clock, then it wouldn't matter, of course, because you're sending it to something else. You're just acting as a go between, which I think that code was that you showed. That was the initial QS by E we were doing. Yours is general. My, this is just a very specific case. I'm just recording the last value. So let's just prove that what we are seeing is correct. So if we go back now, let's count. Let's go to, hold on. Let's just go and change the code. Let's count a little higher. Um, Go back to Black 
crap. So on here then, rather than go up to 16, let's go up to 256. Then we should light up all the LEDs, right? Or the first eight of them, sorry. Save. Um, just restart this. Run it again. So now the firmware is selling 256. Oh, I can't go up to 256 because <laughs> I'm using a U8. And then you go up to 255. Ew. We're going to be one short of a picnic. So the uh, last LED. won't be on. I'm going to go back and change that bit. I just want to check that this is working. If we rerun it again, what happens to the LEDs? Yay! We get exactly what we expect. I know we're one short of a picnic. That's because I could only go up to 255. So we know it's doing what we want it. So we know it's now receiving. Um, And we're doing that at 13.5 megahertz. And we must be sampling the system clock is at 25 megahertz. So that's on the borderline of stable, you know, according to Nyquist. You know, you need to sample at least twice the um, clock frequency. So if I was to start increasing the frequency of the QSPI coming from the STM32, then it would start falling apart. But we're barely there. In fact, yeah, we're lucky, <laughs> quite frankly. These luckies that that works. But then again, we're only looking at the last value. We could be dropping a value along the way, we don't know. We're not checking every value. Okay. But that's good. We have a QSPI conversation going on. And we're capable of decoding aforementioned QSPI. Um, I guess if we did it slowly. Oh, I can't put a delay now. I don't have the delay. Local QSPI driver shared programmed. Shared programmed. Buy a shared. Hold on. So I use a delay in spy. So if I add that in. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just importing into this task the shared spy resource, um, which is a structure. Um, then what I can do is I can do a delay. 
this one and do any other spy task. So if I go to here now, so in every transaction, I add a delay, milliseconds, 10, 100. So if I do it every uh, one second, we see it count up, right? Uh, that's not a U8 though. Does it have to be a U8? If Russ complains, because I'm sharing a resource. It's getting a little offended by my sharing of the spy resource because the USB event is using it. Damn. Um, I've forgotten what I have to do in Arctic in order to share and lock. Damn it. Can I cheat here? <sighs> Fuck it. Rather than work out all the spy sharing bollocks. Excuse my French. Because all that changed in this version of Arctic and I don't really fancy having to go back through that. Can I do uh, this? As a delay, <laughs> cheat rather than trying to share a resource that's locked. I don't know how much of a delay that will give me. Let's have a look. Run it. Uh, I smell trouble. Running. I do not see it changing. Oh, I know. Just going to rerun it. There we go. It counts up really quickly. Um, Just 
increase that just a tad. Slow it down a little bit more because it's a bit fast to see. Right, let's run it again. Should count up a bit slower this time. There we go. You can see it counting. Now that we slowed it down. Marvellous. How very, very marvellous. Right, questions anyone? I'm not going to go on for too long. We're going to hit 10 o'clock shortly. Any questions on this q spy stuff? I mean, I need to generalise that so we can do some other things. But what I want to do is get the communication working between the two devices so that I can run tests. And maybe look at next time, maybe we can, well, it depends whether I get these boards or not. But uh, the next step would be to look to see, just in the same way that, um, when was it on Friday? We had a look at the uh, UART um, CSR wishbone bridge that you did, Laurie. Maybe we can start looking at doing a QSPY. Uh, bridge using this that's possibly the next step and once we can do that I can then send test data onto the bridge and then we can hook the other things into the bridge etc which would be nice any thoughts anyone on what we've done this evening what do we do next um, just going to run it again. Prosperity. Count, count, count. Go on. There we go. Counting up. Voila. Marvellous. So we now have um, the FPGA running with a 25 megahertz crystal based clock, which is more accurate than the internal 60 meg. We now have QSB icons between them. I know we're only running at uh, 13 and a half megahertz. One of the other things we can also do is maybe use a PLL 12 part clock speed. And then um, we could actually increase the speed of QSPI as well. See how far we can take it. Good start though, on the QSPY side of things. I wonder if the, uh, just sneaking a peek at the FedEx page, if it says anything more. Oh look, departed FedEx hub. Oh, it's the same as it was before. Hmm. Well, we'll have to see tomorrow morning what we get on that front. But at least something constructive done. I might go back and revisit that stuff you did as well, Laurie. But yeah, so we could, there's a couple of things we could do. We could try running it faster using a PLL clock. Um, but also maybe look at doing the um, accused by um, bridge. It's a bit like your you uh, bridge for the wishbone. Well, I'm glad I've got something useful working anyhow after the wrap this week and all that idiotic stuff with the uh, dodgy p mod with the flipped 
um, polarity. <laughs> really did my head in. Oh my god. Really not a good. Because of course, you know, if you flip them on here, it assumes that the power pins are connected together, so it connects them together. So all that does is it connects the data pins together if the power pins are replaced with data pins, which is exactly what they were, because they're around the other way on here. Damn. Well, that gave me a nightmare this week. Anyhow, good, good, good. Any questions? Before I um, disappear off into the evening, night, even. With any luck, by the time I do a next stream, we may even have some new boards. How super would that be? Uh, although I do still have to put components on the aforementioned boards, of course. Will that be exciting? Um, and I may do some more in the meantime. I may do some more on this. I don't know what to do. Maybe try different speeds and use a PLL perhaps. Um, we'll see what I have a chance to do. But of course, as soon as the boards arrive, I'm probably going to want to do something with it. But I've got to be careful because uh, this weekend I shall be away. There won't be any streaming on Friday because. Um, it's Easter and we'll be with folks until Monday so um, taking a bit of an Easter break which will be nice I haven't had a break for a while um, so I mean obviously we can discuss down on Discord I should be around um, but if I don't speak to you before then have a good Easter everyone um, and ciao See you soon.